What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. If you're new, consider subscribing. Today, we're gonna be talking about five mistakes that people make when joining the military and I'm really excited because one of these tips is my all-time favorite thing to tell people about what they should do when they join the military. All right guys, if you are joining the military really soon or you want to in the next year, two, three years, maybe five years from now, this information is still gonna be relevant for you, even if it's way out in the future. And it's even more relevant if you're joining the military this week. So I'm glad that you're watching this because this video should be able to help you a lot. And again, one of these tips is going to be my all time favorite advice that I give to people that join the military. So stay tuned for the rest of the video so you make sure you don't miss it. Now, a really common mistake that most people make when joining the military, and that's why I'm starting it off as the first mistake that people make, is expecting to do 20 years when they join the military. You guys might think, well, no, I, I am doing 20 years, or I want to do 20 years. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna gently ask you to please reconsider, not saying that you're gonna go, well, then I'm only gonna do one enlistment. I'm not asking you to do that either. What I'm asking is for you to have an open mind and take your first enlistment as your first enlistment. Don't worry about your second, third, or fourth enlistment and trying to run up those 20 years in your first year because you're gonna have plenty of experiences, you're gonna have plenty of time to fully decide if the military is even for you. And I'm sorry if I offend some people, but it's not the smartest thing to go into the military expecting to do 20 years before you've even served in the military. Now, I'm not just gonna sit here and bash your hopes and dreams without giving you some statistics to prove my point. Now, when you go to basic training, not only you, but 90% of the people that you are gonna be with at basic training are going to say, I am in this for the long haul. I'm doing 20 years. I'm gonna stick it out, I'm gonna get my retirement. Everyone, nearly everyone in your basic training flight. Now I'm referring to basic training because I was in the Air Force, but if you're in any other military branch, this goes pretty much the exact same thing. The real life statistics of this are around 18% of people that join the Air Force do 20 years. It's even less for the other branches like the Navy, the Army, and the Coast Guard and the Marines. So when it comes to joining the military, it's around 15% on average of all the branches of people that join actually do 20. And a lot of people make that mistake of thinking they're doing 20 before they've even set foot into the military. And personally, I believe that this can hurt your career because when you come in, you're so focused on the long term that you aren't living in the moment to understand what is going on because you're just so focused on that end result. It can be extremely beneficial if you just take things one enlistment at a time. There have been so many people that have joined the military that say that they are gonna get out after their first four or six years and they end up re-enlisting because they truly love it. So by saying you're just gonna come in and take it one enlistment at a time does not mean that you aren't doing 20. So really to sum up this mistake that people make, it all comes down to keeping an open mind. Don't come in and expect one thing or the other. If you're joining the military, the best thing that you can do is take things one week at a time, one month, one year at a time. Don't worry about 20 years when you first join. And to tack on a little mistake that people make with this one is also because they plan on doing 20 years, they stop trying to set themselves up in case they don't do 20 years. So then it becomes, well, I don't wanna do 20 years, but I don't have another option, so I have to. Don't be that person that doesn't set your life up regardless of what you're gonna do. Stay in, get out, make sure you're building skills, make sure you're improving, make sure you're building a work ethic that is going to be successful regardless whether you stay in for 20 or you get out after four. The next mistake that I see people make when they join the military is they think that the military is just like the commercials on TV. Now, I was in the Air Force, right? And one of these things would be that people think everybody flies. Now, I know a lot of people, once they start to research the military, they start to understand that there's all these different jobs. Do not think that your job is gonna be like the Air Force commercial for your job. I highly suggest that you do your research, find a real airman or a real soldier or somebody that has your job and talk with them or either watch their videos, get to understand what it's really gonna be like because a lot of people think that the military, you have this amazing amount of camaraderie with everybody, you're just having the time of your life. 
but you're working really hard, you're defending your country, and to be quite honest, the military is similar to just a regular job. You're going to show up every day and you're gonna work your job and you're gonna go home and then you do whatever you want in your free time. Now there are some limitations, I'll be getting into that in one of the next mistakes that I talk about. The military pays hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars every year for advertisements, commercials, to convince people to join. But the best thing that I can compare this to would be Disneyland, for instance. When you see a commercial for Disneyland, it shows you how amazing the experience is gonna be. It's gonna be magical. You're gonna go and you're gonna have the time of your life. But have any of you ever gone to an amusement park and you spend two, three, four hours waiting in line for one ride? That is not what the commercial showed. The commercial did not show anybody waiting in line for all day to ride one ride. So that is what you have to keep in mind is the commercials aren't showing all the things that are gonna happen in your day. They're literally showing the best case scenarios. And to be honest, those best case scenarios are almost never gonna happen. But they're only doing that by showing you the very, 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 very best things of that. They're not showing you all this stuff because it would make you realize how normal it is. Their goal is to convince you that it is magical, so you go, and then you'll find out when you're there. That is why I say in the last mistake, have an open mind, because commercials are not what it's gonna be like at all. I highly suggest you do your research on YouTube. If you're watching this video, it's a good thing. It means you're doing your research. It means you're doing the right thing to set your life up, making sure you're putting yourself on track and you're not set up for failure. Another mistake that I see people making is not taking rules seriously. There's so many simple things that people get in trouble for all the time because they think they can get away with it, such as underage drinking, breaking curfew, and even not following your job correctly. There's a lot of job directives or uh, in maintenance we had technical orders, which was how we did our job, and a lot of people don't take it serious. But if something happens, you are legally responsible for your repairs that you do. So if you do a repair which results in somebody dying, you can actually go to prison for killing somebody. People don't take it serious, I don't know why, but that's why it's making it into this video. And you also might be wondering, curfews, what? Yes, overseas, you might have curfews. In Korea and Japan, currently, they have curfews. When I was there in Japan in 2013 until 2016, we had a curfew the whole time. When I first got there, curfew was midnight. You had to be back on base before midnight. You could get in a lot of trouble. You could lose rank, you could lose pay. You could, you could have all these issues that could happen because you didn't follow a rule that you might have even thought was stupid. But it doesn't matter because in the military, rules are rules. They need to be followed. Don't take them as a joke, especially underage drinking. That is one of the easiest ways to get kicked out of the military. Well, that and DUIs, and you might think common sense, don't drink and drive, especially onto a military base, but you would be surprised to know how many people actually get stopped at the gate, coming onto base, driving a vehicle after they'd been drinking. But even if you get pulled over off base, you're still gonna be responsible, and that's gonna be my next mistake that people make. My next mistake is people not understanding that the military controls everything that you do. Literally, they own you. Now, something that I had commented on when I started this video was I've had a lot of statements, not questions, but statements towards me saying, they can't do that. What happened to freedom of speech? Freedom of speech means that you can say whatever you want to say, but everyone else can do the same thing. A company has the freedom to not serve you if they don't want to. You can walk into a restaurant and say, F you, F you, F you, F you. And they could say, sir, I'm gonna ask you to leave. Else I'm gonna call the cops. And you can't say, I got freedom of speech. I can say F you to whoever I want. They can go, and we reserve the right to not serve you. Well, when you join the military, you swear an oath to be a part of the military under contract the entire time. It's not like, I swear to only be an airman during this hour and this hour of these days. No, you're literally saying for the next six years, you own me. You don't say that exactly, but like that's what you're doing. You're saying I will follow the orders of the officers appointed over me. Well, guess what? The officers appointed over you all the way to who's running the military, there's all these rules that they have appointed as laws while you're in the military. And a lot of people 
don't think that the military can control you or own you, but they do. Another thing that people don't realize is the military can control when you travel and where you travel. Now, a lot of people that are used to not being in the military, like people joining, well, in the military, every time you go on vacation or you leave the general area that your base is at, you actually have to, one, have approval and also let people know where you're going and what you're gonna be doing. Because the military likes to keep tabs on people knowing that they're not doing anything illegal, knowing where they are in case we get a recall, and also knowing where they are because the military is paying for our healthcare and everything and they're taking care of us health-wise. So people need to know if we go and get injured that we can still get taken care of and everything. So there's all these things that go into it, but the military, they control where you go and when you go. You might wanna go on vacation during Christmas, but a lot of people do. So what's gonna happen is your shop might say, hey, like three people can go on vacation. Oh, and all three spots are filled. Oh, but I wanna go. Sorry, we can only afford three people to be gone during Christmas and you didn't sign up soon enough. So all of a sudden, you don't get to go home and spend time with your family because you have to be present because our mission is 24 seven, it's always going. So you have to understand that you are limited to when you can take vacation time. So a lot of shops, for instance, my shop when I was in, the most people we would allow to have leave at one time was two. So if you were like, hey, I wanna take these three weeks to go home, but there was already two people during that portion and then like one person during the other, they might be like, well, you don't get those three weeks, but we can give you this week and a half. And you're like, no, but I wanna be home for that. And they're like, we already have two people going, it doesn't matter. Even though it's not a holiday, it's not anything crazy, the military needs to balance when they have people there and when they have people on vacation. Especially if you wanna travel overseas, you have to do a lot more work to travel overseas than people think. There's like one or two websites that you have to go to to get approval depending on the country and then you also have to go get a security briefing. You gotta do all this extra stuff just to go on vacation overseas. For instance, living in the dorms, if you had just joined and you're 30 some years old, they're gonna be doing dorm checks. Regardless whether you're an adult or not, that's kind of their responsibility. They need to make sure that one, you're taking care of the dorm, two, you're taking care of the dorm so other people don't suffer from like cockroaches, nasty mold, all sorts of stuff. Now believe me, you would think, how would people in the military let cockroaches be in their room, all this stuff? The amount of people that fail room inspections because they have literal boxes of pizza sitting in their room, half eaten, just sitting on the floor, things will get into your dorms and people are lazy. I know it might be surprising, like there's no way, how can you go to basic training, get to your first base, be in the military, have your job, and be that lazy and disgusting? Well, people are, it blows my mind, I do not get it. Two other things that I wanna talk about with this same mistake about people not understanding that the military controls them is double jeopardy is a thing. Now, in the United States, in the legal system, double jeopardy is not allowed. But in the military, it's a whole new ball game. Double jeopardy in this instance means if you get a DUI off base, not only are you going to get a ticket from the state and lose your license from the state, but the military base will also restrict your driving privileges. So if you get caught stealing or doing something off base, the military is gonna double up on that punishment. Not only are you gonna possibly go to jail and get fined by the state, but the military is gonna go, okay, well, we're gonna withhold your pay for a month. They might even deduct your rank they might put you on special duty. They might restrict you to base. Those are all things that are very, very plausible if you get a DUI off base. But getting a DUI on base would result in you losing your driving privileges for six months to a year on base, but they still let you have your driver's license. So you'd actually be able to drive home or have somebody pick you up. So it still becomes a big pain, but it's not as bad as getting in trouble off base. But again, if you just understand that you need to follow the rules, not make mistakes, you're gonna be fine. All right guys, this is my personal favorite thing that I tell people when joining the military because this is one of the biggest mistakes that people make when they join the military. It goes down to your TSP. Now your TSP is your thrift savings plan. This is your 401k of the military. Now I know some people might be like, oh, I don't wanna save money that I can use when I'm 65. I, I just wanna spend my money now. I wanna live while I'm young. Okay, you can do both. I promise, you can do both. But you do have to make some sacrifices. Now your TSP is like, it's huge. It, it is literally one of the biggest advantages of being in the military. There are not many companies that offer a 401k as good as the military. 
Now, the military, when you join, you can opt into the TSP. Anybody joining after this video has been posted, as of January 1st of 2018, you are gonna be automatically set into the blended retirement system. This is called the BRS. This is the new retirement system, and a lot of people didn't like it, but that's because they're stupid. I didn't really mean that, but I kinda did at the same time. A lot of people didn't like it because when you retire, you're gonna make a little bit less, like $100 less a month, every month for the rest of your life. Remember what I said about people retiring? It's only like 18% in the Air Force means it's even less in the other branches. So unless you're in that 15% of people that actually do 20 years, the old retirement system was garbage. The new retirement system actually benefits 100% of the people that join, 100%. The other retirement system only benefited 15% of the military. There's a reason why I said people are stupid if they think the new retirement system sucks. Now with the new retirement system, when you join, I highly suggest that you just get used to putting 5% of your base pay right into it. Just throw it at it, don't worry about it, act like it never existed, and just let your TSP grow. Now the best part about this is after that one or two year mark, the military will start to match your 5%. If your 5% of your base pay equals $100, and that's what you're taking out of your paycheck every single month to throw in your TSP, the military will be like, oh, we'll just give you an extra $100 for your TSP as well. They're literally giving you free money. They did not do this when I first joined because the old retirement system, and it sucked. The new retirement system is the coolest thing in the world. And that is why it is my favorite thing to talk about. Like I get so hype about it because I wish I could go back and be like, yo, why wasn't this started when I joined in 2013? because I would have been on that bandwagon ASAP. Now, why this is so important is because it's allowing you to grow a retirement fund that is way bigger, way bigger than the old retirement system ever would have allowed you to. It is very, very rare for companies to do that. Some companies will say, we will give you an additional 5% of what you're giving. So if you were giving $100 every month, some companies would be like, we'll give you an extra five every month which turns out to be $60 a year, which with interest over 40 years could be a ridiculous amount of money. But think about $100 a month extra with interest growing over 40 years. Yeah, we're talking $1,200 a year extra money, sometimes more than that. I think when I got out of the Air Force as an E5, they were putting an additional like $160 or $180 into my TSP every month when I got out. Because January 1st of 2018, you know what I did? I got in and I opted into the new BRS. Even though I was getting out for a year, I got an extra almost $200 a month put into my TSP. Almost $2,400 over a year put in my TSP that's gonna grow on interest until I'm 65. That's insane. That is literally the coolest thing ever. Now, I actually wrote an ebook on six other ways on top of your TSP and in that ebook, I actually talk about the ways that I think you should maximize your TSP. So if you guys are interested in that ebook, I'll leave a link down below, but I highly, highly, highly suggest it because I literally is, it, it's what I'm most passionate about. That's why I say this for last, because I like to talk about it a lot. Saving money and building your future is like the best thing ever. Like literally look at this YouTube channel. I got made fun of. I had 20 subscribers, 26 subscribers when I left for basic training. We're at 160,000 right now right? Like build stuff for your future. Just because it's not big right now doesn't mean six years from now, 20 years from now, 40 years from now, it's not going to be freaking massive. What the coolest thing about life is, is that if you set yourself up, you can be successful. Now back to what I was saying about when I was in the military, I was getting around 2000 extra dollars a year put into my TSP. Now imagine doing 10 years in the military. That's an extra $20,000 thrown into your TSP. And even if you choose not to re-enlist after 10 years and you just bounce, you can still have time. If you join at 18, you'll be 28 at 10 years. And if you choose to get out, you could have like $100,000 sitting in your TSP after those 10 years with interest and everything that you had put in the military match, interest grew on it. And then like the closer you were to getting out, they were matching like 200 plus dollars a month, just giving it to you for free. If you just let it sit there, after 10 years, you could have over $700,000 by the time you reach 65. 
just for doing 10 years in the military. And I'm like, why would you not do that? Well, the reason it's in this video is because people literally don't do that. They make that mistake. I'm not investing in a TSP. Guess who was one of those people? This guy. I actually didn't start investing in the TSP until 2016 because it was stupid. Because I thought, why would I want to save money for my future? Why would I want to put money away for my future? But then 2015 into 2016, a lot of things changed. I met a lot of good people. I met somebody that sat me down and was like, you need to do this. Once I started doing it, I realized how freaking awesome it is. And I regretted every single day that I didn't do it earlier because I could have had so much more money in my retirement fund. Now I'm literally gonna have like a hundred and some thousand dollars because I only invested for like two years. But if I would have done it all six years of my career, I could have like $400,000 versus a hundred thousand. And I'm like, why, why would I make that mistake? Well, I made that mistake and that's why I'm making these videos and that's why I wrote that ebook is because I walk you through a lot of the things that I did in my life and the things that I did right, I share it with you. And the things that I did wrong, I share it with you. So you can not only learn from my mistakes, but you can be better than me. So I hope you guys appreciate the video. If you did, be sure to drop a thumbs up. Also, leave in the comment section this emoji right here so I know that you watched this all the way through. Also, if you don't follow me on my social media, all the links are in the description as well. Keep up with me on there. And I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace out.